Obviously, what we've been running through with the, the course so far is that, you know, air tightness is one of the, the key energy um, factors that we need to consider as part of the, the building regulations and as part of quality buildings in terms of energy efficiency. Um, what we're going to do, we'll run through the basics around an air tightness test. Um, it's not a full air tightness test. Um, even though we've got two hefty bits of equipment here, they're not the, the same bits of equipment that would be used in a full air tightness test. They're not linked up to a computer. We're not tapping in the, the characteristics of the, the house so that we're getting a, a physical air changes per a dwelling, but we can show how pr pressure differential is measured and will highlight you know, what sort of 50 pas pascals looks like in terms of the, the actual air tightness rig itself. So obviously air tightness contractors develop uh, as, a, as a profession in their own right. Um, and rather than having to do a full air tightness test on site, they can use these pre-test equipment and check the level of detailing that they've done. You know, it's a very quick and easy way to check the level of detailing and then they can enhance the detailing before you get an official air tightness test done. So the way that air tightness is measured officially in terms of the building regulations or if you're going for passive house standard is through a test called the, the blower door test. And essentially it's a fan unit, as we see here, that is mounted into one aperture of the, the building, typically the front or the back door. Um, the unit is sealed in the area and we'll take this down in a minute and we'll just have a quick look as to see how that, that's undertaken. And then around the rest of the dwelling or the building, all of the other vents, all of the other prescribed vents within the building are blocked up. Essentially using rubber balloons um, or prescribed covers and ca uh, cups that sit over vents um, and prescribed inlets and outlets so that we're actually measuring the unwanted infiltration of air. Ventilation is extremely important within a building so we've you know we're sort of focusing in on, on part L requirements a lot of the time within quality build but uh, there's also a section of the, the regulations which is on ventilation so we need to ensure that we we adhere to, to, to both sections. So we take the blower door, blower door unit, as I say, it's essentially a unit that's mounted in to, to the door itself. This cover comes off and we've got a, a fan unit, which, as you can see from the arrow, is blowing the air in one direction. The thing is double-ended in the respect that we can put this cap over one end of the, the unit or the other. So we can turn the unit round and we can either blow air through the aperture or we can suck it through the aperture. Essentially in most cases we're actually working on the inside of the building and we're blowing air out which means that we're actually depressurizing the building and we're actually measuring the air coming in. Um, if you go to the sort of next level, next level in terms of perhaps taking it to a passive house standard when they do the air tightness test for a passive house they actually do both. They, they blow and they suck the air within a house. The, t the pipes coming out either end of this unit are essentially um, pressure sensors. So they measure the, the pressure differential between the inside and the outside environment. So what the idea of the, the test is, is to test the house or the dwelling. Where am I going there? At 50 pascals. Um, these units here are essentially a framework that's forced in against the, move that over there for the time being, so we can release the pressure off these. And we have a unit that comes out. And essentially you can see from the framework that it's fully adjustable. You know, so we can move one piece of equipment can be used to undertake an air tightness test on multiple door, different sizes of a door aperture. 
No typical single door aperture can be accommodated, whether it's very narrow or perhaps wider for disabled access. So the idea in terms of the, the, the process is that the framework is actually mounted up into the unit and it's roughly sized so that when you bring it back down onto the ground, you can actually get that, that key measurement. This single rail goes in afterwards at the end. So we just lift this up. So at the start of the, the air tightness test, obviously we're, we're under there, so we just force that out to the outside. We can tighten that up. We do the same at the, the, the top and the bottom on the height. We can lift that up. And we've got something that's reasonably close to the size that we want. And then that unit is then laid back down again. Sides are folded in. And it stood back up again. I'm not an air tightness tester, so I don't on a daily basis. Just force back in again. And then once they're tightened up, there's a lever in that just pushes it that extra little bit in each case to push it against the edges. Ready for the middle rail to go in and force in against the outside of the, the unit. Again, that can be forced against the outside so we can release that off, force that to the outside, tighten it off and then lock it into to place. Essentially then we just mount the unit in, deciding which way round we want to do. Typically we're blowing out from the, from the building and put this hood around here.